Startups seem to have a very different societal perception these days. I'm not sure if it's Gen Z leading the entrepreneurial charge or people looking for new opportunities during record high inflation. But working at a more agile and fast paced work environment seems to be in right now. And of course it is. You learn more because you take on more responsibilities, you probably report directly to chief level executives, and you get a lot of these valuable early stage stocks in the company. If you're new to this channel, since graduating MIT and dropping out of Stanford, I've exclusively worked with startups. I've been a founder and have held multiple positions from software engineer and technical product manager to chief of staff and even interim CEO. I've been behind the scenes coding and I've also been in the forefront doing interviews, pitching and demoing products. I love startups and honestly, I don't see a scenario where I'm not going to be somehow connected to startups in the future. However, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. It all starts with the people. People are everything in a startup. These are the people that you're going to be spending extra hours working really hard with. They're the foundation and those individuals and relationships will be what keeps the startup going through inevitable tough times. During my startup journey, I've met some incredible people. This includes investors that are just genuinely really cool, coworkers who I now consider some of my closest friends and industry leaders who I aspire to be. But working this closely with people in a high pressure environment is also bound to create tension. The earlier the stage of the startup, the more likely there isn't any sort of hierarchical structure between employees. Everyone is more or less the best at what they specifically do. Therefore, when bigger decisions come along, it may feel like a too many cooks in a kitchen scenario where things stall when there are major disagreements. Usually in a bigger company, the CEO and senior directors can dictate the direction that they want the company to go in. However, at earlier stages, employees and founders alike feel empowered to push their agendas forward. I can't speak too much about the people drama I've experienced, but all I can say is that those moments get very stressful. It feels like watching loved ones fight one another. Although I knew that the pressures of a startup could lead to people tension, I never truly understood the extent of it until I lived it. One of the great things of joining an early stage startup is that you should be getting a substantial chunk of equity when you first sign on. The founders aren't the only ones who get equity. If the company has good leaders, all early hires should receive significant amounts of equity where if you successfully exit, you'll make at least a couple hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars. That equity should grow at an exponential rate with each round of funding. However, the odds aren't in your favor at that early stage. Most of the time, initial employee equity becomes worthless because the company itself doesn't succeed. I love startups and highly recommend them for personal growth. However, for financial stability, I'd actually recommend maintaining a diverse portfolio regardless of your involvement in startups, since you never really know what's going to happen with the market. It's great to hope that your startup has a successful exit, because why else would you be a part of that startup if you didn't think it would be successful? But you can't bank on the money that you may receive if the startup were to exit with a valuation of X dollars. The odds are simply not in your favor. If you've been paying attention to the markets, you'll know that right now traditional forms of investments like stocks and even crypto aren't doing so hot. Unforeseen events like COVID and historically high inflation make timing markets almost impossible. However, with a diverse portfolio, you have a chance of having your other portfolio assets make up for the losses of the other ones. An alternative asset class that historically has done well during inflation is art. This brings me to Masterworks. Masterworks is a platform for investing in contemporary blue chip art. You've probably heard about billionaires investing in art, but thought that it's simply an unattainable investment. Until Masterworks came along, you were right with that assumption. Investments in art by world-renowned artists like Picasso, Banksy, and Monet were accessible only to the ultra-rich. Masterworks has sold three paintings since 2017, each returning over 30% net IRR or internal rate of return to investors. The S&P 500 is viewed as the benchmark for growing your money, and contemporary art prices have outperformed the S&P 500 total return by 164% for the past 26 years. Although we can't predict the future, similar works have appreciated 17% annually since 1984 to put things into context. How Masterworks works is that you create your account with your traditional bank account and pick major works of art or their new blue chip diversified portfolio to invest in. Then you choose how much you're trying to invest, hold shares in those works, and you even have the option to trade them in a Masterworks secondary marketplace. There's currently a wait list to invest on the platform, but using my link and code in the description, you'll be able to skip that wait list and invest today. Huge shout out to Masterworks for sponsoring this portion of the video. 
Startups are truly a pressure cooker for your emotions. Things never seem guaranteed in their earlier stages. The company will always be focused on fundraising, and until you get into your later rounds of funding or reach product market fit, surviving is the biggest goal. Startups aren't for everyone, and a lot of why they aren't for everyone is the emotional roller coaster involved with them. The highs are really high. You may have finished a successful demo, iterated another time on the product, or closed a round of funding. When these things happen, you feel euphoric and invincible. But the lows also do get very low. You may have to let someone go on the team. The demo may have gotten delayed due to unforeseen bugs, or the company's runway begins to get shorter and shorter. When these things happen, you start to really question everything in your life. You try to figure out extra backup plans, and you really don't know what to do. In a startup, you're almost always on call. It's not really the long hours that I'm referring to, because some really long days are expected. I'm referring to the weekends where you may have to fix a bug to keep the servers running, or you may have to do a last-minute edit to the pitch deck for a Monday pitch that you have to stay on top of. If you're working with a novel idea, then you also don't have your safety net of examples that you can base your work off of. You can't simply look up a tutorial. Of course, you'll probably be able to piece together various solutions to create your product, but this involves innovating on your approach. This may require days or weeks at a time where you're trying to tackle this one critical problem. This is where a lot of growth comes in, but it's also a very vulnerable place to be in. You're being relied upon, and the solution has to come from your brain one way or another. To get you through the emotional roller coaster that is joining a startup, I recommend to expect adversity. I'm usually a very optimistic person by nature, but there's been many times where I've had to lower my expectations in order to keep moving forward. Timelines are always longer than expected. That MVP always takes much longer to iron out bugs, and many iterations are required before you nail the actual product that hits the market. And actually, getting product market fit will require getting people to buy in. Whether by working with you or investing, not everyone has the entire vision thought out like you do. So it's really hard to get really good people to commit at an early stage. If you do, though, it proves that you have a pretty good idea. Throughout your career in startups, you're going to have to learn how to communicate with people who don't have tech backgrounds. The earlier the startup is, the less managers are going to bridge the information between the technical and non-technical teams. It's not going to be as simple as saying you're using the latest and greatest technologies. You're going to have to answer a lot about why this is important and why do we need this right now. This goes for explaining your ideas to leadership directly if you're not a founder, or pitching these ideas to investors if you are. You need to get good at framing that story. If you don't have much experience, it doesn't matter how early you were involved with the company. There's probably going to be new people hired above you to fill the needs of the company. You can't take these things personally. You're going to learn a ridiculous amount and probably fully take on multiple roles during your career. In startup software jobs, you'll have so much more knowledge about systems because you would have had a hand in many more parts of the system than you otherwise would have at a larger company. You have the responsibility of understanding how everything works from the ground up. And not just your little section of a giant system. As you gain more of these valuable experiences, you will be the person that can lead larger teams or even whole companies in the future. An aspect of working at startups that I think sometimes gets overlooked is that you'll be working directly with chief-level executives, both inside and outside of your company. These experiences allow you to realize that these leaders are very normal people. They may be very smart and ambitious, but they're not the all-powerful, never-faltering leaders that you may have expected. They're human, just like you. They have hobbies that they love outside of work, and they are learning with each experience as well. To me, this gave me a huge change of perspective. I now look at various leaders in their fields in a new light. I'm no longer intimidated by the presence of anybody, and it's given me the confidence to enter any room, knowing that I also have some pretty unique experiences under my belt. One of the biggest blessings and curses that you'll experience at a startup is being needed and respected by the team. If you got hired or recruited to be a part of a rapidly growing team, you showed enough to not only be valued but needed. This is a feeling that's hard to replicate in other work environments. Most of the time, there's enough employees and enough people in the pipeline that you're expendable. In a tech startup, as a tech employee who is building core technology, you're probably not. You'll be relied upon to produce great work, which does add to the pressure of working at an early stage company. However, from my experience, feeling needed has empowered and motivated me to push myself harder than I would have otherwise. I truly believe that my career is greatly accelerated because of this. So yeah, there's a lot of things to consider before joining or forming an early-stage startup.
but hopefully you now have a fresh perspective on things and can make a more informed decision in the future. I'm going to continue to make the biggest difference I can on this world and hopefully all of you will follow along with me on that journey. <laughs>